Ladies and gentlemen, just uttering the name Bastion generates some mixed feelings amongst the Destiny community. In terms of PvP, some view it as a great tool for putting over-aggressive players in their place, while others view it as an overtuned weapon that should be nerfed into the ground ASAP. But regardless of which side you fall on, Bastion has been a force in PvP since it was released into Destiny 2 a little over a year ago. It did recently receive a few small nerfs here in Season of the Splicer though. Bastion has had its chip damage removed, and the spread angle of the burst has been increased by 13%, essentially making this weapon a little less consistent and a bit harder to use. But on the PvE side of the game, Bastion did see a very nice change, now having intrinsic unstoppable capabilities. I'd venture to say that most players did not view Bastion as a PvE gun before this point, even though it did output some pretty respectable damage for a special weapon. So in this review, we'll have a look at Bastion and see how it's performing on both sides of the game currently. And if at any point you do find this video useful, helpful, or enjoyable, feel free to leave it a like, and consider subscribing to the Ironworker Gaming channel if you feel that the content is worth supporting. But let's get into the review with a brief overview of Bastion's stats and perks. Bastion is an exotic kinetic fusion rifle with a charge time of 780 and 4 rounds in the magazine. For the stats, I'll pull in some solid numbers from Destiny Tracker. And all in all, they're not terribly impressive. That 42 in the range stat, the 39 in the handling, and the 32 for a reload speed are all kind of meh. We do have a pretty respectable stability stat of 57 though, and it comes with some solid aim assist sitting at 65. The intrinsic trait is Saint's Fist charged to fire three spreads of kinetic slugs, which kind of makes this weapon feel like a shotgun fusion rifle hybrid. The exotic perk is Breakthrough, now highlighting the newly added anti-unstoppable champion functionality. This weapon fires staggering projectiles, strong against unstoppable champions. And there is no catalyst for Bastion at the time of recording this video. But if this is a weapon that you're interested in, but have yet to get your hands on, it is available for direct purchase at the Legacy Weapon Kiosk at the Tower. If you have the appropriate currencies available, and you have access to the Shadowkeep content, it's all yours. Let's hop right into the PvE section though, take a peek at this weapon's functionality, run some damage numbers, and talk about its performance. Alright, we'll touch on a few functionality aspects first. When Bastion charges up and fires, when it releases, you can see that it shoots three individual spreads, one after another. Each one of these spreads carries seven individual slugs. The recoil that you can expect to see from this weapon is going to be mainly vertical, but you are going to get some side-to-side -side movement as each one of the spreads releases. For the base reload speed, from the beginning of the animation till the first spread touches off, so this is including the charge time, we're looking at 3.14 seconds. With a single fusion rifle loader mod equipped, we can reduce this time down to 2.67 seconds. For the ammo reserves, at base we can carry 15 total rounds for Bastion. And if you throw on a single fusion rifle reserves mod, you'll be able to carry 17. Moving right along into the damage numbers. And I do hate saying this in every single video, but it needs to be said. Keep in mind that PvE damage numbers are variable and will change depending on content scaling or the tier of the enemy that you are damaging. I do want my testing the Conflux Loss Sector on Nessus versus the Loss Sector Boss, Carl the Colossus. This keeps the damage numbers consistent and comparable from video to video. So, with Bastion versus Carl, each slug is going to connect for 2,295 points of damage apiece. One pattern contains seven slugs, so that's 16,065 points of damage if all seven land. But since with one charge, we will be firing three patterns, we can multiply that by three and come up with 48,195 points of damage for a single round expended. This is gonna put the total damage in a full four round magazine at 192,780. And don't worry about factoring in any crit damage because like all fusion rifles, Bastion cannot crit. Including the initial charge up time, that four round magazine can be expended in 5.75 seconds. So single mag damage per second sits at 33,527. This is a shade less than Merciless, which we looked at a few months ago, whose damage per second through a single magazine sits at around 38,000. But dealing almost 50,000 points of damage in a single burst Bastion has the edge in that department, and that is a very healthy chunk of damage, especially for a weapon that is effective from mid-range. Even some of our, for lack of a better word, less powerful heavy weapons fall a little bit short of Bastion's raw damage output. But since the recent changes, I think the biggest sell to using Bastion in PvE right now is that intrinsic anti-unstoppable champion capability. 
Generally, if you want to make use of an anti-champion mod on a special weapon, with a few exceptions, you need to make use of whatever is offered in the seasonal artifact. And there's usually only one special weapon option in there. For example, this season we're looking at Unstoppable Grenade Launcher. And typically these mods do ask you to commit a lot of energy points on your gloves. This one for instance, takes 7. With Bastion you get your anti-unstoppable capabilities for free, so you can spend those 7 energy points elsewhere if you so choose. And if you're heading into an activity with the champion's all modifier on, if you want to be able to cover every champion type with your weapons, you will need to bring an exotic with anti-champion capability. Because as I'm sure you already know, you can only slot 2 anti-champion weapon mods on your gloves at one time. Also a little quality of life bonus, you do not need to proc unstoppable shot with Bastion. Primaries with an unstoppable mod need to be aimed down sights for a brief period before they can stagger unstoppable champions. Bastion, you just let the burst rip, it'll do the job. Another nice feature that comes along with the exotic perk is the ability to stagger damn near any target, champion or not. It is a very effective interrupt. Plus if you're someone who enjoys using fusion rifles, but there's another weapon in your energy slot that you would prefer to equip. Bastion could be a nice pick for you because it's the only kinetic fusion rifle in the game. Bastion really does feel like a workhorse gun though. There's nothing flashy, nothing fancy going on here. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's a capable gun, but it just doesn't feel all that exciting to use. Especially when we see Season of the Splicer's artifact prioritizing explosions. Explosions are cool. Explosions are fun. And the seasonal artifact in general makes them much more effective. Then I wish Bastion just did a little better job versus the Unstoppables. I mean, it's not bad. You can see here, it's one round to stagger the ogre, then it does take four additional rounds to finish him off, so we do have a reload thrown in there. Like I said, I guess it's not bad considering it is a special weapon, but I feel like it would have sat a little better with me if one mag could have finished the job. A few true drawbacks though. First, it's a slow weapon. It takes time to charge, it takes time for the burst to release, it does have a pretty slow reload speed, and it does not handle very well. I couldn't blame anyone for shying away from Bastion in favor of a more responsive feeling weapon. Next, no catalyst, no orb generation. Not a huge deal since single target chunk damage is more or less Bastion's strong suit, but being a fusion rifle it does have some multi kill potential built in, and seeing some orbs pop when that happens would be a welcome sight. Then it's endgame viability. It's a weapon that probably could get the job done, but I don't think it's going to be a top candidate. It's a little bit sluggish, and when all enemies are a serious threat, I would prefer a weapon that can get its damage out a little bit quicker. But hey, in the end, your call. But with that, let's move into the PvP section, talk about its damage and range capabilities, and discuss its performance. In PvP, we'll start out with the damage numbers. Bastion is going to connect for approximately 29 points of damage per slug. This means we only need to land 7 slugs to deal lethal damage to a guardian regardless of the resilience tier. So one spread can do the job, and as long as we're able to down our target with that first full spread, our optimal time to kill will be 0.8 seconds, and that is of course including the initial charge up time. Versus a guardian and a super, expect to need to land 15 to 16 slugs to down the target. So all 3 spreads will need to come out before that target is going to drop. And for the range, back in Season of the Chosen, all fusion rifles did receive a small increase to their physical range. So now, Bastion is hitting for full damage from 12 meters when firing from the hip, and about 15 and a half meters when aiming down sights. The one burst kill range though, seems to hard stop at about 17 meters. From 17 meters in, Bastion is a scary consistent weapon, if you stay on target. But at 18 meters, the slugs seemingly spread a little too wide to secure a kill. Maybe on a very lucky full burst, which I was not blessed with while damage testing, it could down the opposing guardian. But in game I couldn't recommend using Bastion past the 17 meter mark, unless of course you do have an external damage buff. But on to the performance. So Bastion in PvP is… is strong. It's extremely consistent as long as you don't ask too much of it as far as range is concerned. And it does have a charge time that's a little quicker than high impact fusion rifles as well. So if you do get caught off guard, you do stand a little better chance of getting a shot off and downing your opponent. And while I do think it is strongest when used more defensively, a quicker charge time can also allow for a little bit more aggression. Plus since it's firing 3 patterns per round, it does have some multi-kill potential built in. 
Enemies do need to be in pretty close proximity to each other, but multi-kills absolutely can and will happen. And it does absolutely wreck Titan Barricades. And Bastion is a special weapon that does have the ability to down supers in a single burst, which is generally where I think a lot of the hate for this gun stems from. And, and I get it. Getting knocked out of your super kind of sucks. It, it feels bad. But I've always been one to push back against the Bastion is OP mindset. It is a great gun, but I do think that supers in Destiny 2 are a little too strong still. If you look back to Destiny 1, all the supers were of the one and done variety. Situationally, they still were quite strong, but it did take a little more game sense to use them effectively. Fast forward to Destiny 2, where the majority of the supers are roamers, allowing for prolonged windows of extreme power, and given their mobility, they're extremely hard to combat. This allows the super user to make some mistakes, get out of position, and play a little sloppy while still coming out on top. But this is where Bastion comes into play. This is where Bastion's gonna get you. And if you put yourself in a bad spot while using your super, I have no problem with an exotic weapon that can punish bad decision making. Speaking of bad decision making, your head down hold forward shotgun rushers. Bastion does a great job of sitting them down too. I've dropped these players constantly trying to push me over and over again in matches. And then I usually get some hate mail after the match, citing that Bastion is a crutch gun. And my response is always the same. It is a crutch. It helps me walk all over stupid players. But Bastion does have its flaws. Since the recent nerfs affecting the shot pattern's burst angle, it is a bit less reliable from longer ranges. If the initial spread doesn't do the trick, it does kick around a little more, making the following two spreads a little bit harder to land. Also, we are talking about a weapon that does take time to charge and needs time to fire the full burst. So you are open to take damage for an extended window if you don't outright down your target immediately. Along the same lines, if you get caught flat-footed or an enemy closes the gap on you quicker than you expected, you may not have time to charge and fire. Like I said in the pros, it is better than the high impact fusions, but you still can get caught. And because of the slow handling, you may not have time to pull your off weapon to defend yourself, depending on the situation. And lastly, like we talked about earlier, Bastion can punish mindless super usage, but it is a two-way street. I often find it easy to get a little bit overzealous when a super is heading my way, just because I know that I have the power to shut it down. So if the Bastion user gets out of position or makes the ill-advised play, that super is going to get the best of you. For the verdict, Bastion was, and still is, a very, very good exotic. I love the fact that this weapon can now deal with unstoppable champions in PvE. It might not be the best pick for very high level content like GM Nightfalls, but I at least like having it there as an option. And it did work pretty well for me in Solo, Legend, and Master Tier Loss Sector. If nothing else, it's a weapon that can at least be considered for higher end activities. For PvP, you probably didn't need me to tell you that Bastion is strong. Not overtuned in my opinion, but strong for sure. I don't think it feels quite as good as it used to after the recent nerf, but it remains a fantastic tool for punishing over-aggressive players with a little bit of patience and foresight. But since you made it to this point in the video, if you haven't done so already, please leave it a like and consider subscribing to the Ironworker Gaming channel to catch more Destiny 2 content from yours truly. Also, a concerning number of people have been telling me that they have not been receiving video notifications from YouTube. It's not something that I personally push because notifications can be annoying, but if you do want to get notified when I drop a video, just, I guess, make sure your notifications are turned on. But to contact me, you can look for Ironworker814 on Twitter, join our channel Discord, the link is in the description, or comment down below and I will do my best to get back to you. And with all that being said, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to check out this weapon review. You guys are awesome, and I will catch you on the next one.